Hello everyone, welcome back to the Small Business University. My name is Christopher Reagan and in this video we're going to talk about software and tools that you may uh, need to take a look at for your business. Now this is not an exhaustive list of all the software and tools that you will need but it's a summary of some of the most important and the the types that I'm asked about most often in my practice as as an accountant and as a CPA and a small business advisor. A little bit on an overview here is um, there's eight different sections that uh, I want to try and touch on. We're going to start with productivity and talk about payroll and then all the way to like field service and, and then some other uh, topics when it comes to software and tools. So uh, eight different sections here that will uh, get started now with productivity. Productivity is probably the one that you you are most familiar with. It in, in captures and, and encapsulates like Microsoft Office products, but you could also uh, maybe be using Google Docs or, or be taking a look at Google Docs and Google Sheets. Um, I like to say that your productivity tools should really follow what you decide to use for, of all things, email. Because what you decide to use for email, you then need to have a suite around that system because email is going to be a very primary way that you communicate with customers or clients. So if you are using Gmail, for instance, you would probably be best served to be using Google Docs and Google Sheets with that because it integrates so well with Gmail. But if you're thinking about Outlook or you're already using Outlook, then the Microsoft suite of products is a very good idea or will integrate uh, best with, with something like Outlook. Um, both of these, Microsoft and Google, these are paid subscriptions. So they will cost you something. And that's why I wanted to also include uh, OpenOffice, which is the third one down here. This is a suite of all desktop products, but it's got email, it's got a word processor in it, it's got a spreadsheet product in it. It's got pretty much maybe everything that you need and it's completely free. So if you like that ecosystem or you don't want to spend money right now on some kind of subscription, OpenOffice will take pretty good care of you and it's a, it's a free product. Moving on from productivity tools, because I'm an accountant, bookkeeping is a very important uh, piece of your business and, and very much something that uh, I care a lot about. I think that small businesses should really take the time and the money to get uh, the kind of system that they need. And probably the two that I recommend the most are Intuit QuickBooks and then Xero. QuickBooks you're probably familiar with, but Xero is uh, also an online bookkeeping software. It started in New Zealand. And in New Zealand and Australia and um, throughout some other parts of the world, Xero is a very popular offering. You don't hear a lot about it in the U.S. because QuickBooks has kind of um, filled up most of the airspace when it comes to bookkeeping in the U.S. But these both have online versions that I very much would recommend. We're a QuickBooks operation um, in my firm, so we very much like QuickBooks Online. I mentioned FreshBooks here in the slide because FreshBooks is completely free. And you do see several small businesses using FreshBooks because they have a really neat invoicing um, functionality and easy to use a way to invoice customers and collect payments. Zoho Books is um, like QuickBooks and Xero, it is a paid product, but it is um, it is fully featured, but it's probably best if you're already using the Zoho suite of other software. So Zoho makes a CRM, they make some marketing tools, they make some customer support tools. And if you're already using the Zoho suite of other products, Zoho Books may be a good idea. And then finally, Sage is probably one of the biggest bookkeeping companies in the world. They make primarily desktop bookkeeping softwares and softwares that very, very large companies use. They came out recently with something called Sage One, which is their online offering. It is um, a very good product, not that popular in the US, but it is also one that if you're wanting to get, uh, take a look at everything, you should probably also take a look at Sage One. Here's my advice when it comes to bookkeeping software. Don't uh, plan on switching software because you're gonna lose a lot of your history if you decide to. So let's say you decide to start with FreshBooks, 
but then later you want to migrate to QuickBooks Online when your business gets bigger and it's making more money, let's say, probably you're going to be disappointed with the portability of the history from FreshBooks to QuickBooks. You're probably going to lose it. So here, you know, spend the $10 a month to get QuickBooks Online, or zero is a little more expensive, I think, but if you're gonna choose one of these, choose the one you're gonna stick with for a while because you will benefit from having the history and not having to reset up a new system and making sure it's fully featured the way that you want it, that you want it to be. Payroll is another function that you're gonna eventually have to do. Now, some of you may not have employees, and if you're a sole proprietorship, or a partnership, then this probably doesn't apply until you do get employees. But if you're an S corporation, just know that you also need to run payroll even if you don't have any employees and it's just you. And this is a topic we'll dive into some later in some of the other videos inside um, Small Business University. But basically, S corporation owners must run payroll on the owners, something called officer compensation, and it must be a reasonable amount. The group that I use to do most of our payroll is Gusto. Uh, most of our payrolls between zero and 10 employees will be on Gusto. The other solution that I use if we get over 10 employees is Sure Payroll. This is a paychecks company. Both of these are online. Both of these do all the tax returns for you. Both of them will pay the penalties if something goes wrong with your payroll. So they're very safe and they run you know, they run probably $40, $50, $60 a month, something like that. Intuit, I wanted to mention, they also have payroll, which is the maker of QuickBooks. The only reason we don't use Intuit is it's a little more expensive than some of these offerings. And these other offerings are a little more automated. So I can set up Gusto to automatically run payroll once a month or once every two weeks. And that's kind of handy if you've got a lot of clients that are just on salary or if you've got um, a business where, I shouldn't say clients because, but in your business, if you've got uh, everyone on salary and you just need it to run every two weeks, you can put this on autopilot and you don't even have to go in and run it. So that is um, a little bit of a roundup when it comes to the payroll softwares that you should explore. On the tax side of things, I'm a heavy, heavy proponent for Halon and for Tax Planner Pro, partly because we design both of these um, companies in, in my uh, firm. But Halon will do tax returns for you. These are This is not just tax software. There are CPAs that prepare the tax returns for you, review them, and sign them for you. Only it, it's just a few hundred dollars. It's very, very inexpensive. Tax Planner Pro is a tax planning software. Both of these integrate with QuickBooks Online and Xero, so you can uh, hook them up to your bookkeeping software and take a lot of the work out of both tax return preparation and tax planning. If you're not gonna go that route, I figured I would mention Tax Act. Uh, tax Act has um, a 1040 and a business tax preparation software that is um, decent. It, it, you better kind of know what you're doing to some degree. Um, unlike these other softwares that kind of guide you through it and have professionals that are doing most of the work for you, regular tax software, you're on your own. You're not going to have a CPA signing it or reviewing it. So if you do d decide to choose something like this, make sure you know your way around the tax code a little bit. But if I had to recommend something, I would recommend Tax Act. TurboTax is good too. I don't have it on here simply because Tax Act is quite a bit less expensive. So if you're looking for something that is very reasonably priced, um, both Tax Act and Halon and Tax Planner Pro are very inexpensive options. Point of Sale is the software that your company needs if you have a retail operation. So this is the software that you would you would you know punch in the purchase. It has the scanner, so you can scan somebody's uh, the the barcode on a product. It keeps track of. Um, who's buying what, it creates receipts to give to your customers after they purchase something. That's all called point of sale software. And the thing you'll notice when you start researching point of sale software is most of it is very specific to a certain industry. So uh, something for restaurants that we like a lot is Touch Bistro. Um, if you're running a retail shop, uh, selling products out of a store, uh, Shopkeep is, is very good. If you don't have a lot of inventory and you want to have more of a virtual store, a Vend, 
uh, we we found is is very good. And that Venn has cool stuff like you can run it on iPads and things like that. So that's pretty cool. And then if you're wanting to do something with QuickBooks, QuickBooks has teamed up with a company called Revel, and they they have teamed up to create all the equipment you need at your um, place of business. So it has the the cash register and the the screens and the barcode scanner, all that kind of stuff. And then it all integrates with QuickBooks Online. So if you're wanting to, to use the QuickBooks Online systems, um, look up Revel and QuickBooks Online and, and they have a solution that's really great. Field service is where you have a plumbing company or uh, some kind of service where they, you, the team goes out to uh, the customer's home or location and needs to do some service and you don't necessarily want them always coming back to the office to turn in paperwork it's the software that allows them to type in what they did to bill customers all of that and what I did is I took three of, of uh, kind of the most popular well at least two of the most popular that are on apps.com apps.com is the uh, website where QuickBooks Online houses all the apps that work with QuickBooks and it's a really good website if you're using QuickBooks Online you should definitely dive into it and get to know it. House Call Pro, Service M8, these are two of the more popular ones on apps.com and even the reason I, I put in here Sasfault is this is for asphalt companies that are doing field work in asphalt. It is a very specialized uh, field service app right because you have to be in the asphalt industry and that's what one of the cool things about the App Store is there's a ton of very specialized apps just for your industry. So if you're running like a doggy daycare, there's a there's an app for that uh, in helping you run the doggy daycare with QuickBooks Online. So I would absolutely dive into the App Store and if you need field service, it's a great place to start. Time management is something that um, not all companies need, but if you need time clocks, if you have staff that need to track their time and what they were doing, that kind of thing, um, probably the one I recommend the most is Toggle because it's free and you can have up to five users on it and it's really easy to use. It's integrated with QuickBooks Online and if you need to move time to where you can um, bill customers based on people's time, this is great. ClickTime is also virtual, but the difference in ClickTime is they have um, some hardware you can buy if you need it. So if you need time clocks in your... Um, in your place of operation, you can buy those and they integrate well with ClickTime and it's kind of a whole solution for a little bit more of a manual time tracking element, but that's still online. So time tracking, check these two out. And then the other tools I wanted to mention and the other kind of topics I wanted to get into. First, when you go to buy computers, if you're buying desktops, make sure they have at least 12 gigs of RAM. And if you're buying laptops, make sure they have at least eight gigs. I've made the mistake for years and years and years trying to make sure that I don't spend a lot of money on computers that I would end up getting underperforming computers and later I would have to do some of my own doctoring to them, uh, in, installing more RAM, installing better uh, uh, hardware to make them work with um, what I need them to do in the office. That being said, don't spend more than 600 for either and if you can't find desktops for $600 with 12 gigs of RAM or laptops, under $600 with 8 gigs of RAM, uh, send us a message over at Small Business University and I will show you where they are at because there are, there are lots of options in that range. Also, learn how to upgrade your hard drives to solid state drives. There's lots of videos on uh, YouTube of people showing you how to do this. It's really easy. Literally, you take the cover off of the computer, you unplug the uh, disk drive and you plug in the solid state drive it will make your computers extremely fast especially on the boot up and whenever it's looking for information it is a really really easy upgrade and it'll only cost you maybe 50 or 60 dollars if you order ssd with your computers they can charge you up to 150 so that's why i say upgrade your own computers after you buy them rather than ordering with that upgrade already installed when it comes to a phone system, virtual is definitely uh, the way to go these days. Um, Grasshopper is a company that has, has a great phone system, but if you've got several different stations, you've got several employees or something that all need phones and you want a virtual option, there's a company called Uma that you should take a look at because they have hardware you can buy and they'll you know help you set it all up and it's, uh, again, very easy to use and all on the internet. 
uh, if you if you're doing postage and you're sending out let's say more than fifty dollars a month of postage go get a postage machine with a scale it's so much easier you don't have to run back and forth to the post office all the time and whenever you can weigh your mail perfectly put the right amount of postage on it and send it you'll end up saving a lot of money so that's why i say if you're doing at least fifty dollars a month of postage go get a postage machine with a scale and then finally i mentioned apps.com earlier make sure you're going to apps.com to see all the different tools available to you all the different apps and pieces of software available to you to help you run your business i'm not able to get into all of them here but apps.com you can search by functionality and there's lots of really really good products there so again i wasn't able to you know go into everything and i didn't want to go into things in too much detail I just wanted to kind of touch on some of the um main softwares that are out there and a little bit about what we think about them uh, stay tuned uh, later on in the Small Business University. We will be previewing some other softwares I didn't mention here that are kind of cool or, or can help businesses do some other things. Until then, my name is Christopher Reagan. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.